Hello, I'm Tacoma City Manager T.C. Broadnax. We do everything from electrical work to street work, people who drive trucks, people who obviously are in law enforcement and public safety. To join and be a part of our military, you definitely have a sense of public service. And I believe those kind of skills that they learn uh, throughout their daily activities in the military really sit very well in this organization. I'm the wing commander for the 446th Airlift Wing. We're an associate unit at Joint Base Lewis-McChord, part of Air Force Reserve Command. We're a C-17 unit consisting of a little bit over 2,200 reservists that are stationed here and in the surrounding community. One thing has become readily apparent as I've uh, grown grayer and, and uh, uh, gained a little weight is that uh, 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 all our partner services have, uh, have tremendous professionals. Hi, my name is Teresa Dent. I am a City of Tacoma Human Resources Analyst. I work with uh, multiple departments such as the Customer Service Department, the Police Department, and the Library Department. I love bringing people onto the city that are qualified and want to do a great job. I am also a veteran. I served eight years in the United States Army and I left in 1990 and I was proud to serve the military and I'm exceptionally proud of our military members that have served and are serving at this time. One of the great challenges for military service members when getting out of the military, whether you've retired or you just served your time and have now gotten out, is the transition from the military service to civilian jobs. I was, uh, I was in the United States Navy, submarine force, and I was in a nuclear power program. It was scary. I mean, from, from one standpoint, as a, a nuclear power person, I mean, we knew everything about a nuclear power plant. I guess in some ways I was thinking I was coming out and I was, that I was highly wanted and I had all these skills that, you know, I was going to put out resumes and people were going to be jumping at, you know, banging down my door. I kind of thought I was, in a sense, prepared for anything because when you're in the military, you kind of experience so much different things. So it feels like you're kind of, you get to the point where you're flexible, you can kind of adapt to anything. So in that regard, I, I felt like I was prepared for anything. But you're in a job and a job that's kind of your life because you're living there and you're working there, in my instance, in the Army. Um, so getting out was a little scary to be on your own. You don't get any free meals when you get out of the military. Um, you, don't, you don't get free rent, you don't get free internet. When I got out in 89, there was no support mechanism for resume writing and interviewing skills. I pretty much hired somebody to write my resume and gave them all those military acronyms and all that terminology and they translated it. Basically, I didn't know how to, to really represent my, myself. I didn't know what, what opportunities were available through the city. I really wanted to use the skills and, and, the, and the technical expertise that I had learned in the Marine Corps in the private world, but it was hard. It was hard to figure out a, a, uh, a good fit for how I could make those skills applicable to what I was doing. And, and in some ways, I just couldn't find that fit. The hardest part, I think, about you know, making any transition is doing kind of that skills assessment. You know, what, what have I learned? What do I know about myself? And then how can I communicate that to a potential employer? But what I was able to do was, was to take the, the, the characteristics, the traits, the, the qualities that I developed in the Marine Corps and use those to be successful in whatever I was doing, whether it was school or in the professional area. Another great place to start is right here in Tacoma on base at the Joint Base Lewis McCord. Every single job I had in the Army, I came into with almost no experience or training and had to just figure it out in a very quick amount of time and be effective and I was able to do that but how do you how do you write that on a resume and get that across to an employer who's really looking for somebody who's been doing that job for 10 or 12 years there's so many computerized screens and just so many thousands of resumes going in front of those human resource managers desks that if you don't stand out in that really short amount of time you're not even going to get the chance 
A lot of people come in here thinking, oh, they're going to write my resume for me. No, you're going to, but I'm going to help you. Part of the military culture, so many people come through here, just tell me what to do. Yeah, you know, I've been told to go over here, to do this training, to do this job, how long I should be doing it, and now it's like the lid is taken off, and that creates some anxiety for people. Well, actually for a lot of people. It's like, I don't know, there's too many choices out there. Take a risk. You want to be 40 years old and not, and I've said, oh man, if I would have only done it when I had the chance. I said, this is your chance. No matter what the organization, we really need to understand who you are, what skills you can bring to the table. And one of those ways is through your resume. In today's market, you need to tailor your resume to the exact position that you are applying for and the skills needed for that position. The library is a great resource for these tools and the great thing about it is it's absolutely free. My name's Rhonda Kristoff. I'm a librarian here at the T Tacoma Public Library. We put together a job and education center here at the main library, and that's a place where we've located materials just for job seekers, putting together a resume, um, how to practice for an interview before you go in for a real one. Uh, job Lab is available for them there. We have a really exciting database called Job Now, and it's different from our other databases in that it offers personal job coaching. So you can connect with a professional job coach one-on-one -on -one via the computer, uh, via a chat session. Uh, that's the most popular way is to engage a chat session and type back and forth, um, asking questions, getting answers back in real time. Another component of that database is that you can upload a resume and get professional feedback within one business day. So we're excited about that database because you can't get that type of service for free out there in the community. The job announcement tells you everything you need to know about that position and what they're looking for, what testing processes are going to be used, and how long it's going to take to go through that process. The title is just one thing, and then you look and see if you have the qualifications. Some people, uh, they, they see a fancy name, and uh, they think that they aren't qualified. But if they look at the job description, and they look at those things, and they are able to determine, hey, I know how to do that. If a employer is looking for a fleet manager, use the exact language that they have in their um, job announcements. And don't assume that you know, the person who's reviewing you know, that resume is going to know what that translation is. We strongly discourage our clients to uh, have it professionally done because it's very hard to defend something that you did not write. You are the best person to tell your story. It's a very different resume when you're in the military than when you get out. So you want to be able to show what you've done, what your skills are, and, and how that translates. The first big mistake that I made was I hired somebody to write my resume. 26 years old, didn't have a clue how to put what I did into paper. You gotta make sure that you don't use military jargon because outside of the base, nobody understands what military jargon is. Your resume can never, be, you know, can always be improved in my opinion, but them just transitioning all the words that I was used to using for the past three years into something that everybody would understand. I did not do a good enough job explaining the value that I had received from the Marine Corps. Our culture, our community wants to know why uh, your background or, or, or your resume uh, makes you a more qualified employee than, than somebody who does not have that experience. promotion boards, you are assessed on your skills and your abilities and your performance. So that personality is not necessarily there. Employer wants to see your personality, wants to know that you are going to be able to connect with the team. You know, be yourself, be confident, you want to uh, be real, make sure that you understand where your heart is and, and because that's really what's going to come through in any interview. I think when you break it down, when you're doing your interview process, you just need to be relaxed as possible talk to them in a normal tone, try to eliminate the military jargon so that there's clarity. In interviews, I look for that leadership skill set. Um, just like in the military, you can train anyone to do any particular task given the time and the resources. It's the person that can accomplish those challenges, take on those challenges. Someone that has that can-do attitude says, yeah, we'll figure out a way to make that work and make it happen. 
that's a skill set that in today's environment is not not predominant and then that's why I really try to look for military veterans when I hire. My advice to anyone is to don't take it lightly, rehearse, ask yourself those tough questions, questions that you know that are going to be difficult uh, in an interview situation and then write them down and rehearse them. Do your 10 minute answer you know, and then try to get that down to a 30 second sound bite and do that for as many questions as you possibly can do. Even if it's a job that you may not want Interviews never hurt, you know, more, the more the merrier, so just take them even if there's something you're a little interested in, you get more practice that way. Do a lot of research, I mean, you got to look into companies, and right now jobs are scarce. As I tell people, like when I'm interviewing, don't assume I know what you're saying. Learning how to write a good cover letter and introduce yourself and uh, help them understand what you did in the military and how it correlates to the position that you're applying for. Definitely overall appearance. If you're, if you're saying you're energetic, be energetic. Don't be, I'm energetic, you know, and you're not, you're not displaying those characteristics as you tell them. And then appearance, you know, obviously dress above will help. If you dress over than what the job says, it shows that you're confident and you're ready for the job. Follow up, I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things is just sending out resumes isn't enough. You need to follow up with people. Look deep inside of yourself and determine if there's something that you already know how to do or something that you've done before that's applicable to what you're doing now. The job that I do now is pretty much like it was when I was in the military as a young airman and I used to uh, uh, move uh, nuclear weapons, but I'm moving garbage now. This is an exciting time for you. You get to choose your future. The city of Tacoma needs your passion, your dedication, and your skills to be a part of our team. It takes an incredible amount of people. You name it, if, if it's, uh, if it's uh, something that you drive on or, or use or flush, we work on it. You know, I, I love working here. I haven't always been in the public sector, and, and I love that I'm making a difference for the community and for the ratepayers of Tacoma. We deal with public health and quality of life and making, making Tacoma a better city. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I push anybody that, that asks me any questions about uh, becoming employed, especially if they are military, uh, to uh, give the city a, a really good look. There's a sense of belonging to the city and helping the city when you work for the city. It puts a good feeling in your heart uh, when you're able to help someone else. It's a great job. I've been here 18 years. We, we go out during storms, floods, we manage that. You do it for larger and more important reasons. Working for the city of Tacoma to me is a lot like that. And we want to work with you. We, we, we want to work with the best people uh, we possibly can. And, and, and in a lot of cases, if not most cases, that means you. The, at the end of the day, the, the best thing about this job is, is the people. That sense of purpose, that, uh, that desire uh, has, uh, has now moved from the love of flying an airplane to help people. Uh, I have the opportunity to work with the finest people in this nation. I'm just proud to be here. This is absolutely one of the best organizations I've been affiliated with. There are still a lot of challenges that we've got but we've got some dedicated employees who I think, as we begin to transition to what I consider a different area of functioning as it relates to our budget, we're going to do quite well. So I'm excited about the upside uh, for the city of Tacoma. And that's why I invite many people who are returning uh, from their military service to look at opportunities in the city of Tacoma, because we need those people who are committed to finding ways to do things to the best abilities possible.